What's up guys? So I'm really excited about new frameworks and technology that are coming out because in JavaScript world there is a new one every other week. But this time I've been waiting for it for quite a while and I'm really excited to finally share it with you. Today we're gonna speak about Deno, a new JavaScript server-side ecosystem uh, that was published uh, officially a couple of days ago. Watch this video till the end to find out more about Deno, what it is, uh, the advantages and disadvantages, uh, will it replace Node or not, and if you should uh, go and uh, start learning it today. In the end, I will do a quick demo project to show you better how Deno works. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into it. If you're familiar with Node.js, the popular server-side uh, JavaScript ecosystem, then Deno is like Node, except deeply improved in many ways. Deno was announced almost two years ago at JSConf uh, by the original creator of Node.js, Ryan Dahl. By the way guys, I recommend watching the video of the talk, because it's a mandatory watch if you are involved in Node.js or uh, JavaScript in general. Ryan regretted some early decision in Node, and also the technology evolves, and JavaScript is a completely different language than what it was uh, back in 2009 when Node.js started. Think about the modern ES6, uh, ES2016, 2017 and so on. And because of that he started a new project to create some kind of a second wave of a JavaScript powered server-side application. And we have finally reached uh, the stable version mm -hmm. of Deno 1.0 that has officially been released on May 13, 2020. Deno is written in Rust and TypeScript, that are two languages that are gaining a lot of popularity uh, nowadays. In particular, being written in TypeScript, we get a lot of benefits of the TypeScript, even though we might want to, to write our code in vanilla JavaScript. And running TypeScript in Deno does not require the compilation step because Deno does that automatically for you. So, should you just jump in and start learning Deno? Well, that's a big question because learning something new such as Deno is a big effort. My suggestion here is if you're just starting out uh, using JavaScript on server side and if you don't uh, have any experience working with Node.js or TypeScript, then I would definitely start with Node and then uh, later on explore Deno. But if your, uh, your project doesn't depend on gazillion NPM packages and if you want to use a weight everywhere, hey, maybe Deno is uh, something that you're searching for. Will it replace Node.js? No, definitely no. At least not for now, because Node.js is a giant, well-established and uh, incredibly well-supported technology that is gonna stay here uh, for decades. Node.js is awesome and it will continue to be the de facto uh, standard in the JavaScript world. But I think that we'll see gradually more and more uh, Deno getting adopted uh, because of its first-class support uh, of TypeScript and also the modern standard library. Deno can afford to have everything written with modern technologies because there is no backward compatibility to maintain. Of course, there is no guarantee that the same thing will happen to Deno in one year and a new technology will emerge, but this is what we have at the moment. Now, let's look into the similarities and differences with Node.js. Since Deno is basically a Node.js replacement, it's very useful to compare the two directly. So from the similarity side, both are developed upon the V8 Chromium engine and also both are great for developing server-side with JavaScript. Uh, if we look at the differences, we uh, can see that Node.js is written in C++ and JavaScript, while Deno is written in Rust and TypeScript. Node has an official package manager called NPM, but Deno does not and instead lets you import any YES model from URLs, which in my opinion is very powerful. Node uses the common JS syntax for importing packages, while Deno uses ES models the official way. Node.js uses a callback-based standard library and has no plans to upgrade it. However, Deno uses modern ECMAScript features in all its API and standard library. And the last but not the least important is that Node.js program can access anything the user can access, while Deno offers a sandbox security layer through permissions. A program uh, written in Deno can only access the permissions set to the executable as flags by the user, 
and that's really powerful uh, in terms of security. So guys, uh, enough talking, now it's time for a quick demo. So first of all, let's go on deno.land website and we can see uh, multiple options how we can install deno on our machine. I will go with Brew because I think it's the easiest one for myself. Then let's go back to their website and we can see how easily we can run a welcome program just using a URL. Let's copy it and paste it in our terminal to see uh, the first program running uh, in Deno. First of all, it will go and download this program and after that we can see Welcome to Deno. That's nice, but let's now uh, have a look on how we can create a web service using Deno. But first of all, let's uh, remind ourselves how we are doing it in Node.js. So here is a simple uh, web server in Node.js. We are importing HTTP module using require and then we create the server uh, which will respond to, with uh, status code 200 and hello world text. After that we can call server.listen on the port that we specified and the server will uh, listen to any request and respond with hello world. Let's see how it runs and um, here we can see hello world by Node.js. That's cool, but now let's see how we can do the same thing using Deno. So first of all, let's go to the Deno project and there we can create the index.ts because Deno supports TypeScript by default. And first of all, here we should import server and uh, you can uh, see that we are not importing with require, but with uh, yes modules uh, using import from. And one more interesting thing is that we are importing directly from one URL because as we uh, already discussed, Deno does not have NPM packages. This is very powerful uh, because Deno, when first time running this application, will download these modules and will cache them uh, on our machine. And the second time when we run the application, we will not have to wait because uh, the package will be cached and it will be accessed from, uh, from the local machine. Now let's create the server uh, using the serve function and passing uh, to it a configuration object with the port that we want our server to run on. Okay, now it's also an interesting part because we are used from Node.js to pass to listeners some callback function that will be called anytime an event will fire. But here in Deno we can declare a for loop that will iterate through each request coming to the server and basically this is an infinite loop and as long as there is no request it will just wait for the next one. And because Deno supports top level async function we will do a wait uh, for each request. After that we can just call request.respond and provide the body that we want to return. Alright, let's save a file and try to run our program using the deno run and uh, providing the file that we want to run. We receive a permission denied error because deno is not allowed to access the network and this is because uh, of the sandbox security layer that I was talking about. In order to uh, explicitly allow deno to access a network, we will add this flag allow-net and now we can see that our server is running and we receive a hello world uh, from Deno. That's it for today guys, thanks a lot for watching till the end and if you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing to my channel and leaving a like and I'll try to make more content of this type in future. Let me know down below what you think about Deno and when do you think it will be more popular than Node.js if ever. As always guys, take care, stay hydrated and write clean code.